Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to yet another Status Report highlight, this time for the 9th of October, 2018. The team have had their first internal multiplayer playtest of vehicles. Eugen is going to tell us more about it. He also talks about the hit registration issue, which is one of the team's priorities right now, and Adam wants to introduce some changes related to the gamma abuse, which we do know that some players abuse to gain an edge during nighttime gameplay. You crazy sons of... Well, let's get started, shall we? Kicking off with lead producer Eugen who mentions hit registration has been quite a problem recently, and I want to talk about what we know so far. While for most of you, it seems like your bullets are not registering when hitting players around you, there might be, and probably are, multiple causes for this behavior. From magazines spawning and having ghost bullets, server and client think there is different amounts, through network messages not being sent, to maybe the armor system working incorrectly on specific items and configurations. We're looking into different angles, so far with the use of bots. Ooh, can we get bots? We are able to reproduce the issue when there are multiple corpses around. It seems like a network issue, so we're starting with this to eliminate the possible low-level cause first. It is also the first course of action because we can confirm some network messages are not being sent in certain cases. It probably causes much more than an incorrect hit registration. We're still in the process of debugging when exactly it happens and how but having a sure way to see it in-game helps us a lot. So if by any chance you know how to get your character, weapon, magazine, bullets in desynchronized state, please do report it through the feedback tracker, which I will have linked in the description below. The second thing Eugen would like to mention today is the inventory implementation on Xbox. Gotta get some love to you Xbox guys. We know it needs to get our love and attention. We will soon be reaching out to you and will be interested in your feedback. Other than that, we are preparing a patch for the PC experimental branch, ideally containing the fixes to the hit registration issue, as well as other smaller changes based on your feedback. From log upgrades, to the ability to set a Steam query port, for ease of DDoS setup when hosting a server, and some more. And now the part I'm more interested in, progress towards experimental beta. We've recently had our first multiplayer playtest of vehicles on the new implementation, and the first results are promising. Once we have more to share about the patch, we will do so both here and other channels. But the current state leaves us with two major risky features in terms of overall update stability, vehicles and base building. The rest are going through rounds of intense Q&A testing to make sure we're not missing something game-breaking. Good stuff, good stuff, weeks not months, now let's move on to map designer Adam. Nighttime in Daisy should be dark and terrifying. It should force you into using any light source you have available Having an ability to light up your surroundings should be just as vital as having enough water and food. Shutting off your light should only be required in case of an emergency. Also, when night vision goggles make their way into the game, which is something we still want to do in the future, but not in beta, they should be rare, powerful things that can turn their owners into potential predators. Not a laughing stock, but people avoiding nighttime by turning the night into day by cranking up a gamma slider, be it through drivers or display settings. The removal of the in-game gamma slider was but a first step towards making the very frequent gamma abuse more complicated to do. In today's status report, I'm going to present another step towards making the nighttime an equal playing field for everyone, at least as much as we're actually able to do. The following set of screenshots are of a survivor scouting Mishkino military camp using a flashlight mounted on his AKM, unaware of the danger hidden in the shadows. This first screenshot is the normal view with countermeasures. This second screenshot shows increased gamma without countermeasure, typically how the gamma abusers will see you when you can't see them. And the third and final screenshot, increased gamma with countermeasures enabled, is what these abusers should then see. What a mess. Please keep in mind that this is still very much experimental feature and we will be tweaking it based on your feedback once it hits the public branches. We have also taken a look on the global light config again, adjusting some dusk and dawn values, boosting up brightness of all available light sources, and we will be taking a closer look at the CE setup to make sure there is always enough light sources within the game world. That all sounds great and all, but what I'd like to know is if and when fireplace light sources can be increased, so we can see them from a longer distance if somebody's having a campfire in the woods. Currently we can only see the source of a light from a campfire or a torch when it's too late, but I guess we'll have to wait and see. And finally we have scripter Boris who has made some nice additions to how a crafted torch works and how you can keep it lit. No more do you have to throw away your torch that you've crafted once the light goes out, as torches now contain an attachment slot for rags, so all you have to do is drag more rags on, 
to give more fuel, probably light it again if it does go out. Secondly, you'll be able to even further prolong the burning time by coating the torch with animal lard. Such an upgrade is mainly useful for base builders, as it allows them to craft a long-lasting source of light that can be placed anywhere without the need of frequent refueling. Using gasoline as a fuel is being considered, but currently it's not implemented yet. And that is all for the status report highlight for the 9th of October 2018. Again, some great information this week. Don't forget the community spotlight is on a separate page now. I'll leave a link to that in the description also to check out the community's created content. Oh, and we have two Daisy 0.63 community servers now. The first being our vanilla hardcore experience and our newer server, which is customized, modified, faster paced PvP experience with more loot, more stamina and airdrops that get dropped randomly around the map giving you coordinates through a server message to go find them and battle to the death for the precious loots that it drops. This server is also EU hosted and first person only. I will be leaving details to both the servers in the description below as well as pinning them in the comment section, so go check them out. Don't forget to hit that like button if you enjoy the content I create, subscribe, catch me live on Twitch, and I'll see you peeps next time.